Jim Lee, of course, is a photographer, mainly of fashion and stars and a filmmaker. There's a huge book, Arrested, um, with text by Peter York, with a lot of his marvellous pictures and an exhibition uh, in Somerset House right now till the 5th of June. But it suddenly occurs to me that you had a father in the public service. You had an MI5 father, didn't you? I a did. Spook. Yes, I did indeed. I, I didn't know about it, obviously, when I grew up, and I only discovered it later, um, which was... Um, after much sort of inquiring as to who this man was that was my father. Um, I mean, I was in deep respect of him. I'm not sure quite why. I think because he overpowered me in many ways, um, largely because I was dyslexic and unable to cope academically at school. So I failed him in the respect that I didn't go on to do what he would like me to have done. So um, in that way... Uh, yeah, I mean, it was... There must uh, be a slight sort of natural secretiveness and reserve in a man of that generation and in that service, I would have thought. I'm sure that, sure there was. I mean, I, I, I only discovered so much more about um, my family really when they were dead, which was sad because um, the, the the very fact of what they did, both my mother and father, my, my father mainly, but my mother was there too as this... Mm. Um, business is very much a sort of family-driven yes, business. She was PA <laughs> to the head of MI5, exactly. wasn't she? Um, so that made it... The, their life was really quite sort of coded and quiet and sort of discreet and not really where we came from. And you so were a, a wild, rebellious 60s boy, were you? I know you got into a bit of trouble in Australia. I did, 17. yes. 17. Um, only because I was just flapping, wanted to do something with my life other than what my father was trying to make me do, I felt. I'm, I'm sure for my own good, but... Nevertheless, um, I wasn't capable of coping with the academic side of it. Um, as it happens, there were... My mother was a painter, amongst other things, oh. um, and my, on my father's side there were painters, and so there was an artistic, you know, sort of sign there of... of where, where did you find photography, though? When did that become I found it in Australia, really. Well, I, I, I suppose I always... I don't know when I turned to... I think probably when I went to this school for what was called um, uh, children who were... Who were what was it called? It was it was the, the it became the forerunning dyslexia school in in mm. the country called Down House down in in Rye, but it was sort of known for children who weren't weren't stupid but were, were different. <laughs> were, you know, were, were sort of you know not like academic or not able to cope with academic things. They didn't know what dyslexia was in this. Um, so. Um, Sorry, your question. So, so it was how, yeah. how you found how you found photography and realized well, that's photog- what yes. you wanted, wanted to I do. I think because he, the, when I went to school, the, the headmaster, for example, didn't just focus on academic things. So they, you know, they would try and bring out the best in you. And I sat up um, beside the headmaster when he was teaching history, and he would sort of say, "Well, look, you know, you like drawing. Well, why don't we just draw a picture together?" And he'd sort of <laughs> be teaching you know children how to you know, about history, and would sort of you know be drawing on a little bit of paper with me, and I was sitting beside him. Um, and things like that. It was very relaxed. Um, and from there, I went off. To, I left school early, actually, before taking any qualifications, because clearly I wasn't capable of doing it. Um, and went off to Australia on this sort of £10 POM scheme to get away, really, and do something rather than do nothing. I failed my father and thought, well, I must do, get up to something. So I, I shoved off to Australia um, on this £10 POM um, the migrants uh, <laughs> <laughs> boat, which was a... You nearly got drafted to fight in Vietnam, didn't you? And uh... I, Yeah, I was actually drafted because I'd been there for two years and uh, after two years I'd become an Australian national and um, I, I um, didn't want to go to Vietnam, especially as a, an Australian citizen now, which I'd become after two years. After you'd been there two years, you automatically became a, a citizen if you wanted to be. And almost the day after I'd been there two years, I was I was I had my conscription papers, so I had to kind of get out of that quite quickly. I was quite frightened about that, but nothing uh, like an MI five connection to well, it didn't it didn't do any harm. It got me out. Yeah, I managed to get paperwork. And so you're awesome. home, and and it's the sixties, and and you almost you very quickly become one of the photographers with a particular eye. I mean, you had you've always had. All your pictures, looking through the book, there, there's a sense of a story. There's a sense of something has just happened or might be about to happen, even in what you might think is a fashion shoot, you know, it's to show off the clothes and the client wants the clothes showing. But you like a story, don't you? you like a Well, I do, but I, I, I think really because I always wanted to be a filmmaker, really, from the very early beginnings of, of knowing I wasn't going to do anything academic in my life, I, I sort of verged towards watching films. And I watched two very good French films when I was very young, one called um, The Wanderer with Albi Coco, um, father and son, director and uh, cameraman. 
another called um, Dimor Shavik Sabel with Serge Bourguignon, a sort of story of an older man and a younger girl. And they were both such lovely poetic films. I felt a kindred to it. So they, your, a lot of your photos are often as if they were stills out of a, out of a story. Yeah, but I mean, that, yeah. uh, I mean, you so, work with some great 60s spirits who'd be well up for this, you know, Molly Park and Lossie Clark and people like that. Mm. But there must have been moments when people said, look, look, no, we want the clothes looking a bit clearer in fashion. I know. Photos. I mean, I was always trying to sort of see what I wanted out of this. I wasn't interested <laughs> in clothes at all, really. But, <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you would sort of set them against a sort of yeah. grim terraced houses or a, a yeah. railway track or something something like that and that was the so I could get something out of the picture I mean I was actually more interested in the content of the picture rather than what it looked like I mean I, I enjoyed decorating it and making it look interesting and, and compositionally inter nice and well lit and but it was always the meaning of what was in the picture that made more to me and fashion was a way to to earn a living and um, you know um, pay the bills and feed the young child I had at that point and um, and, and basically you know, carry on. So I use it as a vehicle, really, to... We should say you also made the, the feature film Losing Track, again, about a yeah. poor boy and his father and, and relationships yeah. between them and loads and loads of commercials. But there is... Um, because we're going to be talking to Marion about a, a great loss in a moment, I, I, I want to mention another death which, which haunts the book, because mm. you lost your son Orlando at, at yeah. 13, and there's a strange and powerful picture in the book of... A cliff top, a place where you'd walked with him, yeah. and just a man leaning down and burying a dead rabbit, and there's yeah. a live rabbit nearby. I mean, that, it, that feels a really personal thing to you. That, that wasn't a piece of art so much as an expression. It feels like a genuine expression. It, well, it was a very cathartic time for me, and I, I, it's quite a long winded story. I'll try and clip it and make it quick. <laughs> but it's uh, basically, I, I um, the picture was a sort of like a culmination of different events which led to an exorcism for me in order to be able to... You but know, this was of, years after you yeah, lost Orlando. It spans yeah, it spans. I lost Orlando in a car accident in 1981 um, and obviously went through those awful throes of getting to, to grips with that. And then um, then later I had this um, uh, heart attack, three heart attacks, cardiac arrest. Oh, yes, you've actually technically died three I've times, haven't you? That's why the book's called Arrested. It's not about, yeah, no, well, not, not about criminality, it's no, cardiac. I mean, <laughs> the Arrested is, is, comes up in two ways. One, the arrest of picture. Two, I've had cardiac arrest. And three, um, uh, I, I was arrested in Australia when I was a kid, so the, the, Austra the, Austra the um, arrested part seemed appropriate. Um, on, on a fairly minor issue, but nevertheless, um, it was interesting. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 the picture really was kind of a way to express. It's very hard to explain it all. I could just quickly give you a, a skip through it if you want. It's just basic. Or I think it's the story is told in in the book. In the book. That, that yeah. uh, I mean, yeah. I think people should read it kind of kind of gent gently yeah. and slowly in the book. But really, exactly. it is an important place. Yeah. The point is, it's an important place, an important moment, an important yeah. image of this man leaning down, yeah. grief stricken. I mean, um, it's basically. I mean, the, the vision came from when I was uh, after my cardiac arrest, my three cardiac arrests. I was in a coma for 19 days, and when I came round, which was they weren't sure that I'd be um, brain dead because I was, you know, dead for almost five minutes. But I was luckily in in the snow, so um, they kept me cool and and didn't let my brain um, go. Well, I think it's still here. I'm sort of, <laughs> and then I, um, yeah, as as a result of that, the um, um, you know the the picture that, that I got, if you like, when I came back from my um, my coma, was I saw this this man in the graveyard putting a cherry tree, you know, to in the ground to sort of and uh, grieving as a gesture. profoundly and, and, and grieving, and, and tears were pouring out of his eyes, you know. And I thought that's that was actually me when I when I buried my son. I did put a cherry tree there, and mm. so I, I then went back to the location where I last saw my son on that cliff top. And, um, and and re-establish the kind of compilation. Well, it's of a, it's a stunning picture. I mean, I stared at it for, for ages, mm. I have to say. <laughs> um, uh, is your heart in decent order now? I well, mean, the old trick is still have got yes, a pacemaker yeah. and, a, and a defibrillator in here, but it's, it's OK. <laughs> I'm, 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 I feel fine. <laughs> How long it'll last, I don't know. But <laughs> maybe far too long now I've got this machinery. But Well, the book Arrested isn't going to be, I think, a major collector's item. It 